Shout out to Mike, he's a member of one of my Discord servers, and he informed me that the long count people are referring to in the Tyson Fury Wilder trilogy fight was the second knockdown in the fourth round, not the first knockdown. Now, the first knockdown was very close if you go by the clock. Tyson Fury was on his feet by the count of nine, and in some instances where the referee was counting slightly faster than the clock, Tyson Fury could have been counted out there because as I pointed out in the previous video, a referee is not a digital clock, okay? So a human being is not gonna be able to count exactly on the money for every second. It could be a second or two out here and there. Now I've looked at the second knockdown since Mike told me, gave me the heads up, and the second knockdown is even closer. Again, if you go by the clock in the corner, Tyson Fury is on his feet just about by the count of 10. So his feet are on the canvas. His gloves, you can't see whether his gloves have actually left the canvas, but he's still bent over by the count of 10. He's not fully upright, but he is on his feet. And again, that's very touch and go, but I keep reiterating the referee's count is final. And I do have to go back to the Mike Tyson Buster Douglas fight where Don King was complaining of a 13 second count, a 20 second count. It kept getting longer every time they talked about it. If you Google Mike Tyson Buster Douglas long count, you will see a video from HBO where they compared the count that Douglas received in the, uh, was it eighth round when Tyson dropped him? I think it was the end of the eighth round. They compare that count with the count that Tyson received in the 10th round when he got knocked out. And lo and behold, the counts are identical in length. Both of them, if you actually go by the clock, I think are like 11 or 12 seconds long, but they're identical. So there's parity in terms of how much each guy received by way of a count. You see it. And again, this speaks to the fact that a referee is not a digital clock. He can pick up the count from the timekeeper but if he picks it up at, let's say, two, three, it doesn't mean four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten are going to be exactly on the money in terms of being accurate. So that's what I will say. And another thing that many other people have pointed out, and it's true, Tyson Fury was watching the referee's count. Tyson Fury wasn't out of it. That's what you have to remember. Yes, he took a long time getting up, but he took a long time getting up partly because he was watching the ref's count. And if the ref is at seven, then Tyson Fury thinks, okay, I can get up now. Or the ref is at six or whatever the case may be. If the referee had been counting faster, maybe Tyson Fury would have got up faster. You see what I'm saying? So it doesn't necessarily mean that Tyson Fury would have been counted out if the referee had been going by the clock. Yeah, Tyson Fury might have just speeded up his process of getting up to his feet again. So anyway... These long count controversies are as old as the sport itself, and I've never really given them much credence. Unless it's like outrageous, then I don't really pay too much attention. Tyson Fury was up on his feet by the count of 10, just about for the second knockdown, and he was up on his feet by the count of nine for the first knockdown. That is within the realms of error, and like I say, technically speaking, he was okay both times. So there definitely isn't smoking gun evidence that he should have been counted out at all. If you go by the clock, he made it both times. But it's the extra time he had to recover, which can be the source of some controversy. Would Deontay Wilder have finished him had he not got such a long count? Let's say the referee had been counting as accurately as the clock. Tyson Fury would have had to have got to his feet more quickly. And then would he have been as lucid. I suspect he would have been because I don't think he was seriously hurt either time. I don't think two or three seconds less would have made that much of a difference in this particular situation. Again, because I don't think Tyson Fury was out of it at all. But hey, we'll never know now. If you want to start talking about Tyson Fury wouldn't have won the fight, he would have got stopped if he hadn't had those extra seconds to recover. That's fair enough. But then you have to look at Deontay Wilder when he fought Luis Ortiz the first time. He got hurt, I think it was at the end of the sixth or the seventh round. Comes out for the next round and inexplicably, the doctor decides to check him for, I don't know what, because he wasn't cut. 
Why didn't he check him in between the rounds? Why did he wait until the start of the next round and gave him extra seconds to recover from being hurt? So would Deontay Wilder have won the fight if he hadn't had those extra seconds? Why was he even given those extra seconds? You see, there's more case to be made there for corruption or incompetence than there would be for Tyson Fury's counts in the Wilder trilogy fight. So Wilder's career could have taken a completely different path if he didn't have those extra few seconds and maybe got stopped against Luis Ortiz. Maybe the Tyson Fury fights never happened at all, if that would have been the case. We'll never know. And I'm perfectly open to the possibility that even if Wilder hadn't been given those extra seconds, he still would have beaten Ortiz, okay? I'm just giving you the same argument that the people acting like the extra seconds Tyson Fury got against Wilder in the trilogy fight were pivotal. Hopefully this doesn't tarnish the victory. Hopefully this doesn't tarnish what was a great heavyweight fight because it really doesn't need to. He was up by the count of 10 both times according to the actual clock. So that should be the end of that.